In this lesson, we'll explore how we can design the different pieces of the arm to be animated in a cutout styled fashion. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so we're going to be focusing on the left arm for this demonstration. And again, we're going to be breaking it down into different pieces as we're doing for this entire character so that these different pieces can be moved individually um, as you animate with them. Okay, so we're going to start with the hand and just work our way up. We'll begin with the hand, the lower arm, and then this upper arm piece, which also consists of that shirt sleeve. Okay. So you'll notice um, if you direct your attention over here to our layers section of the timeline view, I've created three new empty drawing layers, um, hand underscore two, lower arm two, upper arm two. I'm using uh, the number extension two because it's the left arm. And since I'm right handed, I view right as number one, left as number two. So feel free to use a naming convention that works for you. Uh, because that's really going to save you a lot of heartache later on, especially once you get into um, setting up a hierarchy arrangement. You'll know exactly what's what in your layers section. All right? So let's come over here to our tool panel. I'm going to go ahead and grab the pencil tool just so we can have those nice consistent lines. And I'm just going to hit Control equals on my keyboard. And let's just zoom in here and then holding the space bar to uh, adjust our drawing view canvas here. So let's start with this hand and I'm just going to draw the overall shape of the hand. Just the overall outline of the hand here. All right. And then we'll come around the other side here. And we'll go ahead and get that finger the coming around. We can always uh, get rid of that line very easily later on using our trusty cutter tool. Okay, and then that other finger kind of poking out behind there. All right, so the next thing we want to do now is jump up to our lower arm two layer. Okay, and this is basically the part that's going to connect to the hand. And what I want to do really on all these three layers is just draw the outlines first before we get into making any kind of edits to the connecting joints, okay? So we'll go ahead and kind of outline this lower arm to match up with our sketch. And you'll notice I'm rounding off the areas that are basically going to be kind of joint areas, the area connects to the hand, the area that connects to the upper arm. And this is because we're going to be, want the ability to rotate these different parts, and we don't want to have any kind of weird sharp sticking edges um, or missing information um, basically as we rotate those areas okay all right so let's go ahead and jump up to the upper arm section and this will basically um, consist um, just again it'll consist of the sleeve and the upper arm we'll start with that sleeve of the shirt Now, I'm not worried about those overlapping lines. We'll clip those. Um, we'll cut those with our cutter tool later on. So I'm rounding off that area right there that'll connect to the lower arm. I don't need to do that right there because this is all going to be one piece. So we don't need to do that. Okay. All right. So now what we want to do is basically go through and talk about um, redesigning these little joint areas. Um, it might be a little bit hard to visualize, but once we go in and we fill it with color, we don't want to see these overlapping lines right here. Even though we're going to be treating him like a puppet, we don't want him to look like one. We don't want him to look like he's made out of wood with these little lines overlapping right here. So we want the ability to fill it with color and have it look very unified um, in accordance with the line work without having those overlapping lines. So let's explore how we can do that. We'll start actually with the upper arm up here. Now, what I want to do is, let's go ahead, before we do anything, let's convert this all to uh, brush strokes. That way we can use our cutter tool more precisely. Again, the cutter tool, I find, works better with brush strokes in that it doesn't give us any weird little uh, divots. It gives us very nice, precise cuts. So I'm going to come up here to my uh, selection tool, select this whole area right there, and we'll go ahead over in our tool properties, convert that. Line, uh, hit this button right here which converts it from pencil lines to brush strokes and again as I mentioned before make sure you're ready to do that because if you try to revert back it's going to jack up everything you see there it's going to look 
kind of distorted. Okay, so now we'll hold down over our selection tool and grab our cutter tool. And of course, we want to make sure that we have this button right here clicked on, the mouse gesture mode. And you can see just what wonders that cutter tool does. So we're not getting those little divots right there. Okay. All right, so this area right here, this upper arm piece is going to be on top of our lower arm. Okay, so I'm already starting to think about the hierarchy arrangement and how I'm going to parent these pieces together. And so the lower arm is going to be connected to the upper arm. So I'd like this to be on top. So what we're going to do is basically cut away this information and create an invisible line so that we can fill it with color. This is by no means the only way to do this. There's some other more complex ways to do this, you know, adding patches and whatnot. But this is a very simple, easy, and approachable way to get started with um, just kind of getting acquainted with breaking up a character at the joints. So we're going to go ahead and turn off this mouse gesture button. And I'm going to come over here. And just make a selection and just kind of cut out that piece right there. So it's feeling pretty nice. We'll go ahead and hit delete on our keyboard. And I can always come back in later with my contour editor tool to kind of shape up and kind of taper um, these areas in a little bit more um, precisely. But let's go ahead and move forward and talk about how we need to add an invisible line right here. That way we have the ability to fill it in with paint. Otherwise, our paint tool will not work. All right, so we can click on our paint tool button, hold down, and we're going to choose stroke right there. Now, what you're going to want to do if you're using the keyboard um, preferences set to um, flash, you can hit D on your keyboard. And this is basically going to reveal all of those um, contour um, vector lines that we see there, okay, that would otherwise be invisible unless we selected them with our selection tool. So this is going to allow us to see our invisible stroke line that we'll draw. And so we'll go ahead and bring that around right there and just connect those lines, okay? And so what it should allow us to do is now fill it with paint. So we can actually grab our paint tool. We'll just grab red for demonstration's sake. His skin's not going to be red, but let's go ahead and try and fill that in. And there you can see it fills in just nicely, and we can hit D to hide um, that, that those invisible lines there. So now you have an idea of where we're going with this. And so in adding these vis invisible lines, we're going to have a nice continual um, show of color here without those overlapping lines. So we're going to do the same thing with this lower arm. I'm actually going to go ahead and take a step back there since we don't want to use, um, use, use red at all. Okay. And let's go ahead now and go ahead and jump to our lower arm layer right so let's grab our cutter tool once again and we're going to do the same thing so I'm going to cut a piece right here all right and then I'll just hit delete on my keyboard and delete that now you're no you may notice that that didn't that didn't cut very well at all that's because we forgot to convert that arm to um, brush lines, okay? So that happens, you know? So if you notice that happening, don't freak out. You can very easily just uh, select it, come over here to your tool properties after you've done that with your selection tool. And if you're happy with how it's looking, go ahead and convert that. So again, that's a good example of the cutter tool and how it reacts to pencil lines. All right, so one more time, we'll come over here and we'll make that selection. Okay, and then we'll hit delete on our keyboard. And you can see how it's very, uh, very faithful to the selection that we made. Okay, so now we'll go ahead and grab our um, stroke button there. Again, holding down on the paint tool to get to that. We'll go ahead and hit D so we can see those um, vector strokes, those contour vector lines, if you will. And we'll just come around here and connect those with an invisible line, okay? And then we can hit D to hide that. So basically, we could fill that with color, 
and it would all look seamless. Now, we're not going to do anything to the hand because, again, I'm thinking of the hand being um, at, as the child to the parent, which would be the lower arm. And then, of course, the same thing with the relationship of the upper arm to the lower arm. So we don't need to do that because it's going to be covered up with color. All right. So my challenge to you in between lessons is go ahead and work on the opposing arm. Basically, you, you don't want to just outline this part of the arm. You want to visualize basically the entire piece of the arm right here and then basically outline it and break it down just as we've done right here. OK, so in our next lesson, we're going to take the exact same approach with our left leg. Basically, we want to go through and just take the exact same breakdown with the leg just so we can really kind of um, reiterate this process of breaking down our character into um, different pieces so that they can be moved around once we add some pivot points. So stick around and we'll see you in our next lesson.